Hello students, very good morning to all of you. Today we are going to uh, discuss uh, this set relation and uh, functions chapter. In that uh, uh, we are going to deal with the exercise based on relations, that is exercise number two. So yes, uh, let's begin our discussion. So this exercise two is mainly based on uh, our relations topic. So let's begin with the first question. So here the question is saying there is one set A. Let me zoom it. Yes. So there is one set A whose elements are two, three, and five. And there is one another set B whose elements are two, five, and six. Then A minus B cross A intersection B is. So basically we have to take the Cartesian product of this A minus B set and A intersection B set, right? So yes, uh, let me write this set A. So our set A consists of this two, three, and five, okay? And our set B is having uh, these three elements, that is two, five, and six, okay? Now, what will be our set, this A minus B? What will this set consist of? So basically, it will consist the elements of set A, okay? which and we have uh, from that set we have to subtract the elements which are in set b also okay so we uh, the elements which are in set a are 2 3 and 5 and out of that this 2 and uh, 5 are in set b also so this uh, set a minus b will consist of only one element that is 3 because 2 and 5 are eliminated from set A because these elements 2 and 5 are in set B also, right? And what will be this set A intersection B? What will be the set uh, A intersection B? So uh, it will consist of the elements which are present in both set A and set B because we are taking intersection of set A and B. So which, which are those elements? Uh, 2 is present in both of uh, the sets. So 2 will come, 3 will not come, and 5 will come, right? This 5 will come because these two elements, 2 and 5, are a present in both sets A and B. So yes, uh, we, are, uh, we are having these two sets. Now we have to take the Cartesian product of this, these two sets, okay? So A minus B cross A intersection B, we have to take the Cartesian product of these two sets. So what will be the Cartesian product? So in this, it will consist of the ordered pairs, right? Ordered pairs in which the first element will come from this, uh, this set, right? First element of these ordered pairs will come from these, uh, this set A minus B and our second element will come from this element, uh, from this set. Right. So uh, first element of uh, first element will come from A minus B set that is three. So uh, this three and second element will be two. One more element will be there in this and that will be three comma five. Right. So this will be the elements which will be present in this uh, Cartesian product. Okay, so let's see uh, which are the options available. 3, 2, 3, 5. So this option C is correct, right? So option C is the correct option. So I hope it is clear to all of you, right? Now let's move to the next one. So this is our question number two. It is saying a uh, number of elements in set A is four. Number of elements in set B is three. And... Uh, number of elements in A cross B cross C is 24. Then we have to find the number of elements in set C. So basically, let me write the information, whatever is given in the question. So it is saying number of elements in set A is how much? 4. Number of elements in set B is how much? It's 3. Okay. And number of elements in this A cross B cross C uh, is given out to be 
this is given to be 24, right? And we have to find this number of elements in set C. This is what we need to find, right? So how can we proceed with this question? So let me take this, this information. So number of elements in A cross B cross C, we can write it in this way also. Number of elements in A cross B, right? Number of elements, uh, or let me uh, say in this way, a cross B cross C, no? So, number of elements in A cross B into number of elements in C. Okay. In this way, we can write. Now, we are having this information. How many uh, elements are there in this set? It is uh, equal to 24. Okay. And number of elements in A cross B. That we can find uh, anyhow from this information. Okay. So let me change the color of the pin. So from this given information, we can write the number of elements in A cross B. That is how much number of elements in A into, or uh, let me write into in this way, point number of elements in uh, set B. Is it okay? Now, number of elements in set A is four and number of elements in set B is how much? Three. So this is coming out to be 12. Right. I will uh, I will be using this information here. So number of elements in uh, A cross B will be 12 and uh, this into number of elements in C. So from here we get the value of uh, we get the number of elements in C as 24 upon 12. That is nothing but 2. So yes, we got this uh, uh, information that number of elements in set C is 2. So this will be our answer. So uh, is it available in the option? Yes, it is there in option B. So yes, this option B will be the correct answer, right? So how we approach this question? We uh, we actually uh, broke this thing, number of elements in A cross B uh, cross C is equal to number of elements in A cross B into, so let me write, we can uh, change it in this way also, into number of elements in C. So from there, uh, we got the value of number of elements in set C. So yes, let's move to the next one. So the question, uh, this is question number three. It is saying that the relation R defined on the set of natural numbers. Okay, so uh, R is defined on set of natural numbers, fine. Such that, okay, a relation is defined in this way, A, comma b such that a differs from b a differs uh, from b by 3 so basically this a differs from b no from b i have to write from b so a differs uh, from b by 3 so yes uh, this is the uh, relation on the set of natural numbers and the relation is defined in this way uh, a comma b such that a differs from b by 3. Is it okay? So, means a and b are related by this property. a differs from b by 3. Now we have to find this uh, relation r. So, how can we find? So, basically, let me say in this way, uh, r, okay, since r is defined on the natural numbers, so we can take uh, the value of uh, means the value of a and b will be from one. Okay, one, two, three, four, all counting numbers. It it may take a and b may take all counting numbers, right? So the condition is a differs from b by three. So uh, basically, uh, if I take a as one, okay. We cannot take anything less than one because counting numbers start or natural number starts from one itself. So what will be the value of B? B may be four, right? B may be four because the difference between them should be three. If I take A as two, our B will be five. If I take our A as three, our B will be how much? Six. In this way, this series, uh, these uh, uh, sets means these elements of the set will continue. So it will be 4, 7, right? It will continue in this way. 
So this will be our relation, but there is one ambiguity, right? In this, in this definition, if you see the definition of relation, A differs from B by three. Okay. So basically there is one ambiguity. Uh, so I can, I can write uh, this relation in this way also. Let me take uh, this uh, relation means, uh, let me take this value of A to be four. We can, we have, uh, we can have one value. It, let me take A as 5, so we can have a B as 2. So this is basically opposite of what we have written in the above set. So 6, 3, 7, 4, in this way also it may continue. But in options, if you see, both these things are there. 1, 4, 2, 5, it is in option A, right? It is in option A. And if you see, observe these elements, these are in option B, okay? So uh, basically A differs from B by 3, it generally means this thing, no? Uh, a minus B ka mod hum le sakte, right? A minus B ka mod should be equal to 3. Okay? So in that case, both this option A and B should be correct. But as far as I know, I have seen the answer key. They were saying this option B to be correct. So yes, option B is correct. But if I say option A is correct, that also holds good. Okay? So in my opinion, both this option A and B should be taken. So yes, uh, this is for all for this question, right? I think these, uh, you guys are clear on this uh, ambiguous definition. So A differs from B by three. Uh, it generally means uh, mod of A minus B should be three. And from that, we can have both these option A and B to be correct. So yes, uh, moving to the next question, that is question number four. Let's uh, observe this question. So let A be non-void set of children in family. Let A be non-void set of children in a family. Then the relation, uh, the relation X is a brother of Y on A is. Achha. So let me uh, write it in a more simpler way. What is given in the question. So our set A is what? Non-void set. Okay, very good. And it is uh, the set of children in a family. So set A consists of children, right? Set A consists of children in any family. So let me write in this way. So set A consists of a, uh, children in a family. Now there is one relation defined in this way. There is one relation defined in this way, x comma y, such that, such that x is a brother of y. x is a brother of y. So this relation is defined in this way. Okay. And uh, the relation is defined on set A, right? The relation is defined on set A. And what is our set A? Set A is this thing. Set A is children in a family. Uh, now we have to comment on this relation R, whether it will be reflexive, antisymmetric, transitive, or equivalence. So let's uh, go with the reflexive first. Okay, so we will talk on the reflexivity uh, reflexivity of this relation. So what is a reflexive relation mean? It will be basically x comma x, right? x comma x. And in that case, our definition of relation, as per the definition of relation, x is a brother of x. x is a brother of x, right? This is what uh, what is coming from the relation definition itself. So since we are talking about the reflexivity of this uh, uh, relation, we are taking the same element that is x comma x. So hope this is clear to all of you. Like how do we normally take the uh, elements for it to be reflexive, symmetric and transitive. So we have taken this x comma x element and we are saying as per definition, x is a brother of x. How can one uh, be a brother of himself, right? So it's not possible, no. x cannot be the brother of himself. Okay, so this, uh, this is coming out to be false, or let me write in this way, this is coming out to be false, hence this uh, function is not reflective, hence not reflex, uh, not reflexive, not, uh, I'm saying reflective, sorry for that, so hence this function is not reflexive, right, let me talk about this uh, symmetricity, so let me talk about symmetry, uh, symmetry, whether this uh, function is symmetric or not. 
So basically, if you see, I am going to take this x comma y. If x comma y is there, if x comma y is there in this relation, then y comma x should also be there in the relation. This is the definition of the symmetricity of any relation. So if x comma y is there, so what does it mean? If x comma y means what? x is a brother of y. x is a brother of y, right? And y comma x means what? y is a brother of y is a brother of x, right? So if this thing, if x comma y is there, if x is a brother of y, does it imply that y is a brother of x? If x is a brother of y, y is a brother of x. Does this imply that y is a brother of uh, x? No, no. Y may be the sister. Right? Y, y may be sister. I am saying that y may be the sister of x. Y may be the sister of x, right? So, so this condition is coming out to be false, right? This condition, this uh, this thing is coming out to be false. So, for symmetricity, if x comma y is there, then y comma x should mandatory present in the relation. So, no, it's coming out to be false because y may be the sister of x also. Is it okay? So, uh, this function is not symmetric also. This is not symmetric also. And reflexivity, we have already commented that it is not reflexive. Now, let's talk about the transitivity. Let's talk about transitivity. Transitivity. Okay. So, uh, now what does transitivity, uh, transitive relation means? So, transitive relation means if x comma y is there, okay, and and if y comma z is there, then then x comma z should be there in the relation. Now, if x comma y is there, what does it mean as per definition of relation? X is a brother of y. X is a brother of y, right? And uh, this y comma z, what does it imply? Means what does uh, this defines? Y is a brother of z. Y is a brother of z. Then x comma z. Then x comma c. If x is a brother of y, okay? x is a brother of y, y is a brother of z, okay? So, obviously, x will be the brother of z. x will be, x will be, let me write in this way. Obviously, this x will be, x will be the brother of z. x will be the brother of z. If this condition is coming out to be true, because why? X is a, see, X is a brother of Y and we are further saying that Y is a brother of Z. So, since X is a brother of Y and Y is a brother of Z, so obviously this X and Z are related, no? This X and Z are related and by what relation? They are the brother of each other. Means X is a brother of Z. Okay? So, this x will be the brother of z is coming out to be true. This is coming out to be true. So, this relation will be transitive. This relation will be transitive. So, it passed the transitivity test. So, this will be a transitive relation. Right? So, I hope uh, you guys are clear on this. So, uh, a reflexive, no, it is not reflexive. Transit, anti-symmetric, no. It's, it is transitive. And equivalence, no. Uh, if uh, a relation is all three, like uh, for equivalence relation, it should be reflexive also, symmetric also, transitive also. So here uh, the relation is not reflexive and not symmetric, then there is no question of equivalence relation. But uh, this function, uh, sorry, this relation is transitive obviously. So the correct option will be option C. So this was our question number four. Uh, let's take this question number five. So, let number of elements in set A is n, then the number of all relations on A is. Okay. This is our question. Let a uh, number of elements in set A, let me record here. Number of elements in set A is how much? n. Then we have to find the number of all relations on A. 
So basically, uh, the theory part, if I uh, go with the theory part, theory part of this question. So basically, if you say uh, uh, this is our number of elements in set A is uh, M, okay? And number of elements in set B is suppose N, okay? Then number of relations, how do we use to define? Number of relations from A to B. Number of relations from from A to B. How do we use to define this thing? This is coming out to be, means this used to come out to be 2 ka power mn, right? Means number of elements in set A. 2 ka power number of elements in set A. Here in this case, it's m. And into number of elements uh, in set B. Here in this case, it's m. So 2 ka power mn. This gives us the total number of relations. Total number of relations. Now here, the relation is defined on the set A itself, right? Number uh, relation is defined on the set A itself. So total number of relations will be total number of relations will be how much? 2 ka power mn. So here uh, the both the sets are A itself. So it will be n into n, right? 2 ka power n into n because the relation is defined on the set A itself. So it will be 2 ka power n square. So this will be the total number of relations. This will be the total relations, uh, total number of relations on A. Okay. So yes, uh, I hope that you guys are aware of this theory part, how this formula comes basically, 2 ka power m and how this thing usually come. Right. So uh, I hope uh, you guys are aware of this. So I have just, I am not going in the uh, derivation part. So if our set A and B are like different and one relation is defined from A to B, so this used to be our total number of relations. This used to be our total number of relations. Since the relation is defined on set A itself, so it will be 2 ka power n into n. That is nothing but 2 ka power n square. Okay. Now we will take this uh, question number 6. So if a set S is this, from 1 to 20, set K is ABCD, set uh, G comprises of B, D, E, F, then the number of elements of this S, Cartesian product of S and K, union Cartesian product of S and G is number of elements of this set we have to calculate. So yes, uh, given information is, this is our set S in which there are 20 elements from 1 to 20. So 1, 2, 3, up to it's going up to 20. Okay. There is one another set K uh, that is comprises of four elements. This A, B, C, and D. And there is one another set, this set uh, G. Okay. Set G is there. And that is what? That is also comprises of four elements. And those elements are B, D, E, and F. Okay. Now we have to find the number of elements in this Cartesian product of S and K. So basically, let's start with this Cartesian product of S into K. Okay. So if I ask you, what will be the number of elements in this uh, set? Number of elements in the Cartesian product of S and K will be how much? It will be number of elements in S into number of elements in K. Means number of elements in set S into number of elements in set K. Now we, we are aware of this number of elements in set S. How many? 20. Okay. And number of elements in uh, set K, it's 4. So it's coming out to be 80. Is it okay? In the similar way, I am going to find this number of elements into Cartesian product of S and G right s and g so that will be number of elements into s into number of elements in this g set so number of elements in s is 20 and number of elements in g is how much 4 so here also it's coming out to be 80 now we have to take the union the question is asking to find the number of elements in this s into k union s into g right 
we have to find this thing. So if you observe here, if you observe here, see S into K, S into K, uh, this uh, means Cartesian product of S and K. So here we are having, here we are having these set sets, means this will consist of ordered pairs. I'm talking about this. I'm talking about this Cartesian product, okay, S and K. So this Cartesian product will have the first element from set S, okay, and the second element from set K, right? And this Cartesian product of S and G will have first element from set S and the second element from set G. Now, if you observe here, there are two elements common in K and G. What are those elements? This B, okay, B here. And what else? This D here. Okay. So, basically, there will be some common elements. There will be some common elements or, or we can say common ordered pairs. Cartesian product have uh, elements of ordered pairs, right? So common elements or we can say these elements will be ordered pairs between common elements between uh, these uh, two Cartesian product S and K and Cartesian product of this S and G. Now, how many common elements will be there? How many common elements will be there? 40, no, because Anything, let's take, uh, let's say I'm uh, taking this uh, uh, one of the element uh, from S is one and I'm taking the other element is B. So one element of S uh, cross K will be one comma B. And in the same way, if I take S uh, cross G, we can have one comma B, right? So in this way, the common elements will be basically 20 into two. Because 20 elements are there in set S and two elements are common, that is 40, right? And so since these are the common elements, so this will repeat, these 40 elements will be there in this 80 also. And these 40 elements will be in these 80 elements also, okay? So basically number of elements, number of elements in this Cartesian product, S cross K union, S cross G will be how much? Will be this 80 means 40. 40 that is separating, uh, that is uh, in, uh, that is not common, right? That is not common between S, uh, S uh, cross K and S cross G. And this 40 elements which is common, this 40 elements which is common, so I am arrow marking also for better understanding and this with 40 elements which are only in s cross g right so there will be total number of elements will be 120 total number of elements in this set will be total number of elements in this set will be 120 right so this will be our answer so i hope you guys are clear on this okay so 120 will be the correct answer to this question Okay, it will be neither, uh, it will be not 80 plus 80, 116. Okay, so yes, uh, this uh, there is one option C. Okay, so that will be our correct answer, 120. Okay, now let's move to the next question. This is our question number seven. So uh, it is saying that the relation R is defined on the set of natural numbers. Okay, so R is defined on the set of natural numbers, very good. And a uh, relation is defined in this way. Relation is defined in this way. A comma B such that such that A is equal to 2B. Okay. So relation is defined on natural numbers. And relation is defined in this way. That is, uh, it will consist of ordered pair A comma B such that A is equal to 2B. Then we have to uh, find the R inverse. Right, we have to find R inverse. So it's simple only. Let's uh, first find the R. Okay, so what will be our R? So uh, this A and B should be our natural numbers only. So uh, let me take, uh, since A is equal to 2B, so if I take A as 1, okay, if I take A as 1, what will be our B? 
it will be 1 by 2, right? Then only this A will be 2 times of B. Okay. Uh, but uh, but this here, this B is coming out to be fraction. No, it's not a natural number. So it will be not our part of the relation. Let me take A as 2. Let me take a, A as 2. So yes, 2 will be there. Then in that case, our B will be 1. Okay. And if we take a 3, if we take 3, the value of A as 3, then it will be, what will be the value of B? It will be 3 by 2. So this will also be a not in our relation. So basically, uh, uh, after 2 comma 1, we can have 4, 4 comma 2, right? 4 comma 2. Then 5 will again not work. Then we can have this 6 comma 2. Okay. So basically, the first element will be even number, right? First element will be even number. 7 will also not work. In that case, the B will be 7 by 2. That is not, uh, uh, that will not fit in this relation. Right, because R is defined on natural numbers. So our first element will be basically even number because A is equal to 2B. So 8 comma 4, okay, then 10 comma, uh, 10 comma how much? 5, yes, this will fit. In this way, it will continue, right? So basically our R is coming out to be this, 2 comma 1, then it will can be 4 comma 1, then it can have uh, 6 comma 3, then 8 comma 4, Okay, and then 10 comma 5 in this way it will continue. Okay, but uh, yes, this is our R, but we need to find R inverse. So what is R inverse basically? In R inverse, in R inverse, the domain of R becomes a range of R and the range of R becomes the domain of R. So basically we will, uh, what you say, we will swap the ordered pairs it will give us the R inverse. So R inverse will be 1 comma 2, 2 comma 4, then 3 comma 6, then 4 comma 8, okay, then 5 comma 10. In this way, it will continue. So this will be our R inverse and this is what we were asked to find in the question. So R inverse will be 1 comma 2, 2 comma 4, 3 comma 6. Yes, this option B is correct. This option B is going to be our correct option, okay. So I'm writing here also this option B will be correct. So this is all in this question. Let's move to the uh, question number eight. So one relation is given here comprising of these three, uh, these elements. And, and this relation is defined on set A. And we have to comment about this relation. Okay. We have done similar type of questions earlier also. So our set A is what? Set A is 1, 2, our set A consists of three elements, 1, 2, and 3. And uh, this relation is already given here in roasted form. So no need to worry. It's already given. So 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, then 1, 2 is there, then 2, 3 is there, and 1, 3 is there. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six elements are present in this relation. Now we have to uh, talk about reflexive. So let me see uh, the reflexivity of this function. So reflexive, uh, since a set A is there uh, comprising of three elements, one, two, and three, and all the elements are related to itself in this relation, so it will be reflexive. Why? Because this one comma one, Okay, 2 comma 2 and 3 comma 3, all are in relation. All are there in the relation, right? So it will be a reflexive relation. This is the definition of reflexive. All the elements of this set A should relate to itself and it is, uh, it is happening here in this relation. So it will be a reflexive relation. Now let's talk about symmetric, symmetricity. So whether this uh, relation is symmetric or not, so if you observe here, 1 comma 2 is there. 1 comma 2 is there in this relation. But as per symmetricity, 2 comma 1 should be there in the relation. For this relation to be a symmetric, 2 comma 1 must be one of the elements of this relation. But 2 comma 1 is nowhere present in this relation. Right? So it will be not symmetric. It, this relation will be not symmetric. Right? Now let's talk about the transitivity of this relation. Okay, let's talk about whether this relation is transitive or not. 
So if you see, uh, one comma two is there, right? One comma two is there. Then if you see, is there any terms starting from uh, two? So two comma three is there. Yes, there is uh, one term two comma three. Okay, two comma three is there. Then one comma three should be there in the relation to be transitive. So yes, obviously one comma three is also there. So yes, it is transitive. Let's take one another example. So I am taking this two comma three. So two comma three is there. Okay. Is there any element that starts with three? Yes, there is one element three comma three. Okay, so three comma three is there. So this two comma three should be there in the relation. And yeah, it's there, no? It's there, two comma three is there. Okay, let me take this uh, element. One comma three is there. One comma three is there. And uh, is there any element that starts with three? Yes, three comma three. So three comma three is there. Now we have to check whether one comma three is there or not. So yes, one comma three is there. So yes, this function is going to be transitive. This function is going to be transitive. So this function is reflexive also and uh, transitive also, right? So now let's check the option, A reflexive but not symmetric. Yeah, it is correct. A reflexive but not transitive. No, this option is wrong because it is a uh, transitive. Symmetric and transitive, no, it is not symmetric. Neither symmetric nor transitive. Neither symmetric nor transitive, but it is transitive, no. So it seems to be like this option A is correct only, but there is no mention of uh, transitivity. So function is reflexive, but not symmetric. Yes, it is there. This is uh, this will be the correct option. Okay, so this option, uh, question number eight, Option A is the correct answer to this question. Okay. Now let's move to the next question. Uh, question number nine. Okay. The question is asking the number of equivalence relations defined in the set uh, S, which are having these three elements A, comma B, comma C. Okay. So let's find out. So there is one uh, set S comprising of three elements A, B, and C. Okay, and uh, the relation is defined on S. Relation is defined on S. And we have to find the number of equivalence relations. So basically, uh, number of equivalence relations, there is no uh, formula for this. Okay, in case you have uh, gone through the theory part, we have seen that there are uh, there is a, a fixed formula for finding the number of reflexive relations. Okay, if it is defined on set S, if there is defined, uh, we are having a fixed formula for finding the number of this. What you say, uh, symmetric uh, relations. Okay, the number of symmetric relations can also be uh, find out by uh, using the uh, formula but there is no fixed formula for finding the number of equivalence relations so we have to uh, go through what you say we have to define the relations and see whether uh, how many relations are possible so we have to make relations in such a way that the relation should be equivalence relations right this is the question equivalence relations so let me take let me define relation one in this way uh, I am going to define relation one in this way, in which a, I am going to uh, relate all the elements to itself. So a comma a, then we can have this b comma b, and we can have this c comma c. So this is basically identity relation. This is what this relation R one is the identity relation. Okay. So yes, identity relation is uh, our uh, what you say. It will be uh, reflexive right symmetric and transitive so obviously this r1 will be our equivalence relation okay now let me define one more relation r2 in this way that will consist of these three elements no doubt okay b comma b c comma c now i am going to take first two elements of this so a comma b okay and uh, what now for uh, making it equivalent, so suppose I'm trying to make it a symmetric relation. So since A comma B is there, I should include B comma A also, right? So obviously this will be a reflexive because these three elements are there. 
a comma b if i have taken i have to take b comma a also in this way it it is coming out to be symmetric also and guys if you observe it it will be a transitive relation also because if a comma b is there b comma a is there so a comma a should relate a comma a should be there for it to be transitive and obviously it is there no a comma a is there so it will be a equivalence relation so in this way i i can define two more relations in this way a comma a will be there b comma b these three elements will be no doubt there now i am going to take the second and the third element so b comma c and then c comma b okay this will also be a reflexive relation sorry uh, equivalence relation and i am going to define one more relation taking the first and the third element that is that is a comma c and c comma a right a comma c and c comma a see here one comma c is there so c comma a is there it is a symmetric then if a comma c is there c comma a is there a comma a should be there and it is there so yes this will be these are the four relations which are uh, equivalence relation now guys there will be one more relation that is universal relation there will be one more relation that will be universal relation that universal relation will also be an one equivalence relation so it will consist of all the elements of this cartesian product s cross s okay so it will have a comma a okay then uh, a comma a then what a comma b then a comma c okay then we will have b comma a b comma b then b comma c okay then c comma a c comma b and c comma c so these re this relation this relation is basically a universal relation okay this will be a universal relation consisting of all the elements of s cross s okay and this will also be the equivalence relation so there are possible there are these uh, five relations possible on set s for so that all the these relations can be equivalence relations so total number of re equivalence relations defined in set s comprising of these three elements will be five so this option a is correct answer for this question okay so i hope you guys are clear on this if yes can we move ahead okay 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 so let's take this next question i think this is the last question of this exercise okay uh, let's see what is what this question is asking so if r be a relation from a to b okay and a set a is listed here set b is listed here and a comma b belongs to r such that a is less than b then we have to find uh, this r composite r inverse right we have to find r composite r inverse so let me first list down our set a so set a is what comprising of four elements and these elements are 1 2 3 and 4 okay and our set b is uh, this which is having three elements 1 3 and 5 now once a relation is defined from a to b one relation is defined from a to b and uh, the how this relation is defined relation is defined in this way a comma b such that a should be less than b a should be less than b is it okay this is the uh, question what it is saying so let's first define our uh, let's first uh, find out our relation r okay so what will be our relation r so this a first element of this relation will come from a set a right and the second element of this relation will come from b okay and a should be less than b so let's uh, uh, def uh, find the elements of this relation so if i take a as one okay and uh, b no we cannot take a as one because b will be from this set uh, b and uh, okay it will be there no so a comma b means we can we cannot take this one but we can take this three okay so this fish uh, this element fish uh, fits in this uh, relation because a is less than b 
obviously one is less than three okay so let's try to find the another element will be one comma five okay now i am going to take the second element of set a that is two so two then two comma one no it will not fit in this relation two comma three will fit so i am writing two comma three two comma five will also fit so i am writing that also now i am taking three so three comma one will not going to help us three comma three will also not going to help us yes three comma five will be there in this relation and let me take this uh, fourth element of set b so four comma one no four comma three no four comma five will be there so yes this is our set uh, this is our relation comprising of six elements so there will be six elements in this relation r now the question is asking r this is basically composite relation r o r inverse right r o r inverse so let me first write r inverse so what will be our r inverse it will we can just we will just swap the elements of these ordered pairs so our r inverse will be 3 comma 1 5 comma 1 okay then uh, 3 comma 2 okay then uh, 5 comma 2 then 5 comma 3 and then 5 comma 4 this will be our r inverse okay now coming to uh, coming to the question coming to the question question is asking to find this r o r composite r inverse right so it will be basically let me draw the arrow diagram for this okay So this is our R inverse. Okay. Uh, uh, no, not in this way. What is the uh, domain of R inverse? In this way, we can say, what is the domain of R inverse? Domain of R inverse is three and five, right? Three and five. Domain of R inverse is three comma five. What is the range of R inverse? Range of R inverse is one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. And what is our R? R is basically this. Uh, R, if you see the uh, domain of R, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, and its range is 3, 5. Okay. So this is basically what you say R inverse. Okay. And this is basically R. This is our R. Okay. Now we have to find this. R composite R inverse. So this will be actually R composite R inverse. This will be R composite R inverse. Now we have to find the elements of these, this relation, composite relation. Okay. So uh, let me write this R inverse on the top of this arrow. So this will be R inverse. Okay. And this is R. And this from the, here, from here, to here, it will be R O R inverse. Okay. So if you see uh, 3 comma 3, R composite R inverse will consist of what? 3 comma 3, 3 comma 5, then 5 comma 3 and 5 comma 5. This will be the R inverse. So basically this will be 3 comma 3. From here I am going to here. So 3 comma 3, then uh, 3 comma 5. Okay. Then 5 comma 3 and 5 comma 5 these will be the four elements these will be the four elements of this set of this set this you can also visualize in this way this you can also visualize in this way so suppose r inverse i am taking so uh, the set uh, the first element is 3 comma 1 so 3 is mapped with this one okay now i have to see this mapping of one in relation r so if you see one is mapped with 3 in R, okay, and one is mapped with five also. One is mapped with five also, right? One is mapped with five also. So basically, this composite relation R composite R inverse is directly linking this three, is directly linking this three to this three and five, right? So this is direct linkage. This is directly directly linking three to three and five. So hence, these two elements are there in this composite relation okay now let me take one more example this 5 comma 1 let me take this 5 so 5 is getting linked with 1 
Okay, five is getting linked with one. Now we have to see the uh, element in R, which is getting mapped from one to which element. So here also from one, you see three and five are getting mapped. So this five is getting linked with this five. So there are three, uh, two elements. If you further take uh, this element in R inverse, three comma two, okay. So three is getting linked with two. Three is getting linked with two. Now I have to see the relation R, the linkage of two to which element? Like two is getting link, linked to which? So from here also, if you see two is getting linked with three and five. So three and five. So basically this is nothing but what I have drawn here, no? So this R O R inverse is linking these two elements with this. So obviously only four elements will come in this composite relation. So I hope this is uh, clear to all of you. So if we observe the options, we are having this option C. I'm saying this option C to be correct. Okay. So this option C is correct. So I think this is all uh, because there were only 10 questions in this uh, uh, exercise. So yes, uh, thank you all of you. Okay. So let me draw one big smiley here. Okay. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you all of you and yes, we will be back with the next exercise of this chapter. So till then, Tata, goodbye, take care.